Welcome to the Land Your Bet Sports Betting Show. 14 NBA games here on Wednesday before we get into Thanksgiving break. So I'm going to be looking at plenty of player prop projections and best bets here in this video. Also going to be running the live show for everything that we miss. So make sure you jump in on the YouTube channel or on Twitter every day, 5.30 p.m. Eastern. We'll be there today going through these best bets, trying to find the best value possible. Also want to say a quick congrats to the three VIP month giveaway winners who won yesterday during the live show, give away three of those uh, free months to those guys. Uh, and happy to say that we're going to have a couple more as well. So I've got an opportunity for another couple giveaways in the VIP that we're going to be running through right now. If that all sounds good, give that video a like. Let's jump right into it. Here's the deal. We've got four apps now that I am partnered with. So we've got some pretty good deals if you're looking to get in. And if you don't yet have an account, make sure you do jump in on Rebet, right? which we have right here. We've got Underdog as well, $100 free to sign up and up to $1,000 in bonus bets available there. Better as well, got up to $200 to match up your deposit uh, when you sign up for Better. And Sleeper, which is definitely good for fantasy, but also really good for these pick'em style bets that you can make on Sleeper as well. So if you do sign up for one of these apps using the code, LYB for all of those. Go ahead and send me a DM showing me that you signed up using the code. We'll get you a free month in the VIP. And better yet, we'll give you a month for each app that you sign up for. So you sign up for all four, get four free months in the VIP. That's what I'm offering right now if you guys are interested. Let's get into some hoop. We got Steph Curry who we're kicking it off with. And this might seem chalky, and it probably is, and I do not care. There's nothing telling you that you should play this other than Steph Curry destroys Oklahoma City. That's it. That, that's what I have. I have a hit rate, and I have a dude who does unspeakable basketball things when he's on a floor against the Thunder. That's been the case for him in seven straight games that he's gone over this number. He's at 23 and a half points. Love the over on that. Probably a ladder play if you're interested for Curry at about 25. 30 points as well, I think, are both very doable. He's gotten at least 30 in seven straight, 34 points per game in that time frame. And the last, the, the thing here about Curry in this matchup is he just played against Brooklyn, didn't play very many minutes, only played 29 minutes in part because that's just how they're doing things right now in Golden State is that when this team isn't playing a very good opponent or one that they really, really want to beat, like an OKC who's atop the West alongside the dubs, then Curry's not playing as many minutes and they're not using him as much against those worst teams come back in to the good teams like we've got OKC right now. This is where Curry makes sure to get those minutes. He played 37 minutes against them in the last game, 29 minutes against Brooklyn, 28 minutes against Detroit. Like he's just playing lower minutes versus bad teams to conserve him. And I love that strategy for Steve Kerr. I'm not going to talk trash on it at all. But when he plays good teams, more minutes, more usage, more shots, everything. So I'm going to expect Curry to be looking at about 18 to 19 shots in this one, looking at 10 to 12 threes for him at least as well in the attempts. And that's going to be how he gets his points tonight. I like him for those uh, at 24 and a half, 25 and a half, and probably small out play up to 30. Let's stay chalky, baby. Let's look at Tyrese Maxey points now, because this is also very beatable. It's at 22 and a half, probably going to rise up to about 23 and a half at this point. Also a ladder pl uh, pl play here for me for Tyrese Maxey. He's up to 30 minutes in the last game. And that's the scary part is like, is he going to get the minutes? Do the 76ers get blown out again because they're playing the Rockets who are much better than they are? Rockets aren't a back to back. So we got to look at that. But either way, if this game stays relatively close, within double, like even within 20 points, not double digits, I think Tyrese Maxey still needs to get his legs under him. There's no reason to sit him if he's out there looking healthy and still can go, right? He's also had two days of rest since that last game. And this team coming in, the Houston Rockets, excuse me, do not have uh, very much rest under their belt. They played an overtime win. That was a grinded out game against Minnesota on Tuesday night. You see Dylan Brooks played 41. Fred Van Vliet played 45. Um, and Thompson played 38, and those would be the three guys that most likely to spend time guarding Tyrese Maxey. I don't know how much they'll have FVV on him, but he probably gets switched on to him, and that's what Tyrese Maxey will be looking for. With them on the back-to-back -back after that OT win, like them to have a little bit less legs, uh, more tired legs against this squad tonight. Uh, and Maxey's already killed Houston. This is how you beat Houston. You have a guard like Tyrese Maxey who can get into the lane, can cause problems, can get to the foul line and can hit the three. And he does all those things super well as a speedy guard. So I expect Dylan Brooks to be fouling him a bunch uh, and getting him back to the free throw line like he's done against this team in the last three, almost 32 points per game and a 29% usage rate, despite JoJo being in there for two of those three games. His usage rate was still super high in those situations. And without Paul George and him and uh, Joel Embiid, once again, really like him to, to uh, have a very high usage, get him above 30 minutes and get those 25 points. I got a couple looks here on uh, Wednesday morning that still haven't come out with lines, but I love this dude and the dude afterwards, neither of whom have lines up yet. 
come on, man. Ty Jerome. Can we not? We can get Isaac Okoro props because he'll probably be starting again, but we can't get Ty Jerome props. Uh, they'll come out later for sure. This is going to be similar to how we see Karis Levert's lines because this is the backup playmaker, point guard, scoring guard, whatever you want. He's, he's the everything on the second unit because Karis Levert's out. And that was Karis Levert's role. Now it's Ty Jerome's right now. We'll see how much of that Karis Levert takes back from him when he comes back because he's out in this one again. Um, and there's a blowout possibility. So bench players going to get some more minutes likely for the Cavs against the Hawks here, who also don't even might not even have, I should say, Trey Young in this game. And that would be huge for them, obviously. Um, if you look at Ty Jerome in the last four games, one of those was missing Darius Garland, all of them missing Karis LeVert. 20 plus minutes in the last four or 20 plus minutes at least in the, each of the last four playing more than that he's up at about 28 minutes per game 22 points per game 13 field goal attempts per game cashing all the threes we know how well he's playing he's the hot hand and i'm gonna ride it till the wheels fall off if we get this at about 12 and a half points or less definitely gonna be hitting that 15 point ladder also probably gonna be a good look in this one the other man playing well for a team missing its star right now the mavs missing luca once again Najee Marshall, and I think he's going to be a good look. Just don't have the props up yet for him. I will be taking them, though. I'll tell you that right now. We've got Luka out again. You've got Clay questionable. You've got Grimes questionable. They matter a lot. If both those dudes are out, Najee's a great play. If one of them is out, Najee's a great play, in my opinion. You, you look at him in the last four without Luka, 28 a game, 20 points per game, four boards. So I'm not really here for the assists for him in this one, to be honest, but I think the points at the very least, probably like the rebounds if you get them at two or three and a half, They'll probably be at least three and a half, if we're being honest. And once they get up to four and a half, I might be off of it. But the, the anything around like 13 and a half, 12 and a half, 14 and a half points for Najee Marshall, it's going to be a nice over for me. Um, the other thing, though, is Clay. If Clay plays, this one might be a little bit more of a stay away. I will be taking Clay at that point because the Knicks force things into the corners. They force the spot up shot, right? They play really good on pressure, on deep, on ball pressure defense is what I'm trying to say um, so the guys who are going to be the outlets a little bit more like a clay even a Najee who will probably get out into transition with this team as well this is a good look for both those dudes on the points I kind of hope clay plays and we can get 15 or 16 and a half for him I think he's good for a good game tonight um, but if, if not Najee's the, the the sort of backup play for me in this one for Dallas Sticking in this game, another man whose props I love right now. We got props up for Cat Cat, Carl Anthony Towns. He had a really nice response after a brutal uh, game in, in Utah where he was six for 19 from the field, like one of nine from three, did not look good. Uh, was unable to take Col John Collins to the basket for some reason, just didn't look good. Um, but I like both the points and the assists against Dallas, who's surprisingly bad at guarding centers. And I think Cat's gonna have a lot of success whether he's posting up down low or more likely coming from the three-point line, either hitting threes or driving to the basket, where I don't think Gafford will be able to stay in front of him. And we've got Lively questionable, too. So you've got one center that might get into foul trouble against Cat, and if they don't have their backup, and we're looking at some more, what, Powell and maybe some Kleba minutes if he's healthy. So, yeah, I, I like Cat's matchup a lot for the points. Also like the assists, though. Uh, something he's been doing really well this season, three assists per game. Dallas allows the six most points per game to the center position. They allow the third most assists per game to the position as well. Love both of those looks. When you get a center who uh, is very good passing in the lane like Cat is and drives to the basket as much as he does, he drives as much as a wing to the basket for, for Carl Anthony Towns. And on those plays, he should be able to find some either open shooters or cutters that are playing off of him as they're probably going to need to double him uh, when he is driving to the basket and help off of their guys. That's where Cat would be finding those dimes. So I hit him for both, over two and a half assists. I hit him for over 24 and a half points. If you want to play points and assists, fine. You want to do a little 25, 10, and three kind of game for Cat uh, on the same game parlay. I think he's a really good look tonight. Let's keep riding the Jalen Brunson assist train, something that we, we commandeered that into the ground last year, but we went under with Jalen Brunson assists because he didn't have the help that he has this year and he needed to shoot a lot more, and he was as a result. Now, shot attempts are down, points are down, free throw attempts are down, all the point stuff down. And as a Knicks fan, I don't give a single solitary shit. I'm very happy to say that we have a pass first point guard again, pass first shoot first it's an even amount let's just say he's pass shoot equal right at this point uh he's not biased towards either and this is something that has really come into form over the last like 14 games or so in the first three still really clunky and honestly those were the only clunky offensive games 
And to be fair, the first game of the season against Boston, they got wiped out of the gym and they didn't even have a chance to really get their offense going. So I would say that this is really a, an offense that's gelling nicely right now. We've got them in the top five in offensive rating in their last 10 games. Um, you look at him, it's actually over an 11 of 14 games since he uh, was went under in the first three in, in terms of the assists. They're getting up to about eight and a half. That's getting a little bit dicey. I might just be looking at the points with like an, an assist same game parlay for Jalen Brunson, or at the very least, um, you know, keep those at about eight and a half and get plus money. I would not be taking that for less than plus money. Uh, but Dallas is a team that'll give up assists, eighth most on the season overall that they've allowed, and the 12th most to point guards. So you can get spot up shots against them. That's good for assists for the point guard. They're much better defending the pick and roll ball handler and limiting their points, but not their dimes. And they're not that good against the romance. So I think Cat is going to have some some assists from Brunson. I think OG and McHale are still going to get their dimes and we've got miles mcbride back who they've put on the floor with brunson a good amount and that's a really good option for a spot up shooter off of him he's been playing with campaign and still getting assists but campaign's more of a point guard than a shooter with mcbride in there really liking his ability to get those dimes tonight Hopefully you're able to get this with Vooch still at 16 and a half points. But if you're not, I like 17 and a half on the over for him as well. I mean, look, I, I didn't like 20 and a half against a bad Wizards team last night. They're on the back to back, but 20 and a half is a season average. The blowout ended up happening. He played less than 30 minutes and I didn't like it. I don't think they're blowing up the magic. I don't think this game's going to be very high scoring, but I don't think they're going to blow out the magic. Uh, that's for sure. In fact, I don't think they're going to beat the magic, but I think Vooch is going to be out there for enough and shooting enough to get the points. I, this is something he's done almost the entire season, getting over 16 and a half. Uh, the hit rate is 16 of 19 games. He's averaging the 20 and a half points on the season. He's at about 15 shots, about four threes. Doesn't get to the free throw line. It's why I don't always love to back Vooch, but he is shooting that thing right now. And I still think he's going to have success doing that here. Now, this is a really good Orlando defense, and it sucks that it's, it's tough to score against them. Let's put it that way. So I also think the first quarter points are a look because this man has crushed his first quarter line on the season uh, going over this. Also, 16 of 19 times, getting six and a half points per game in the first quarter. It's at about four and a half. You can still get it for decent juice, not available everywhere right now as I'm looking uh, live at it as I'm recording, but it's still available four and a half for a good number at like minus 115. I really think the first quarter look is awesome, but if you get 16 and a half for anything like minus 120 or better, that's a great look. The 17 and a half points, I needed to be better than minus 110, closer to even money for me to like the 17 and a half. It's a tough matchup, man. Like Wendell Carter is going to be out there. So is uh, Goga Batadze. It's a big, long team. Jonathan Isaac will be out there a bunch. So it's not the best matchup, but it's just too low of a number. And that's what I'm playing for Vooch is 16 and a half on this season. If we get that, I'm going over pretty much every time for Vooch. And that's all the time I have for you. But one more reminder, go ahead and sign up for one of these apps. If you don't yet have it, you should have these anyway, man. You should be shopping everything as best you can. And when you're playing these DFS pick them apps, uh, you should have all of them. So you can make sure you get the best price. But I am offering a free month in the VIP Discord for anybody who wants to get all the plays I'm making. If you do sign up using code LYB for any of these four apps, I will get you a free month for each app that you sign up for. Sleeper, better underdog and uh the last one would be rebet as well so if you sign up for any of those four links are all in the description of the video use code lyb to get all of the discounts that you get as a result of the promos and you get a free month for each app that you sign up for using code lyb so hope to see y'all in there i'll be on the live show tonight 5 30 p.m eastern to get over all the rest of the games and props that we didn't get to look at yet with all the games we have tonight and until i see you then happy betting